So the iPhone 15 series was announced and the iPhone 15 Pro looks really spicy. It looks amazing. However, I'm still rocking this iPhone 14 Pro and it feels like it just came out. So let's talk about the main differences between the 14 Pro and the 15 Pro. So the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max have a titanium body, which you will feel on the sides of the phone, as well as the general weight of the phone. It's supposed to be the lightest Pro model of all iPhones. The titanium looks cool. I'm sure it feels amazing. It's supposed to be like something that even astronauts use in outer space, which I think is cool, but do we really need that in a phone? Nah. Maybe if you like to rock your phone without a case, without a screen protector and that kind of thing. But I've been using the iPhone 14 Pro for almost a year with no case, no screen protector. Check it out. I mean, it looks almost brand new. There are some scratches on the front of the display, but you can't really see those unless you look really closely and kind of shine a light in a certain direction. The titanium though looks really awesome and it would be a slightly lighter phone. The 14 Pro also has metal sides, but it's that kind of mirrored finish. As soon as you touch it, fingerprints show up, but it's really not too bad like I'm kind of used to it at this point iPhones usually have fingerprint magnets somewhere on there so the titanium on the 15 Pro series would be pretty nice on the sides but do you really need it like do I really need it nah the 15 Pro will also have a thinner bezel on the front of the phone which is nice but I mean this is already pretty thin on the iPhone 14 Pro have I really felt like damn I wish these bezels were just a little bit thinner I haven't thought that once honestly the 15 Pro still has the same kind of dynamic island design I believe same size and everything and it would have been nice to see maybe even just a dot for the cameras or whatever on the front of the 15 Pro but you know what can you do another huge announcement on the 15 Pro is USB-C finally on iPhones Apple is hilarious because they're always like for the first time ever on iPhone we're giving you USB-C or some other feature that Android has had for like 1500 years. But is it something that the iPhone has needed for a while? Hell yes. So I'm not gonna knock Apple too much about that. It kind of feels like one of those about damn time situations though. The USB-C thing will also enable faster transfer speeds if you have like large files you need to transfer your computer. That's really cool. But for me personally, I don't really think I would ever use that. Like in the last year, I haven't even plugged my iPhone 14 Pro in more than like maybe five or six times. I can't even remember the last time I've actually plugged it in because it supports wireless charging, it supports MagSafe, and that's just so much more convenient to like plop it down on a MagSafe charger. But is USB-C on an iPhone enough to persuade me to get the 15 Pro? At the moment, no, because I don't really think I'd use it that much, honestly. Another upgrade on the 15 Pro is with the camera system. So we see a new five times zoom, the equivalent of 120 millimeters optical zoom. For video shooters, the 15 Pro and Pro Max now have 4K 60p in ProRes using a log color profile, which is pretty cool. And because it has USB-C, you could connect that to an outboard, you know, external drive or a computer or something so that you can immediately transfer the files over. And you can do the same thing apparently with the USB-C on the iPhone to tether photos also from your phone to a computer or something. So that's really cool. But for me personally, that's not a huge deal. I probably wouldn't use that feature that much. And these newer cameras are spicy, but are they enough to get me to be like, I need to get the 15 Pro? At the moment, not really, to be honest. The next order of business is the action button on the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. The action button will enable you to not only silence your phone, but also you can turn on your flashlight with it, open your camera. You can customize the action button on there. It's a really cool improvement. I'm sure it's gonna be very useful for a lot of people. I think especially if you're using it for camera, I could see that, like turning the camera on and off really easily. So it's a cool feature, but again, I don't think that's good enough for me to consider spending another a thousand dollars plus on a new phone and another big but kind of meh change to me is the processor on the 15 pro is the new a17 pro chip and it's supposed to be you know 2.73 times faster than this or 0.68 whatever and honestly i don't even really care about that at this point because iphones have kind of eclipsed themselves in terms of processing speeds like how much faster do you really need your iphone to be the 14 pro is instant for basically everything and iPhones have been instant for basically everything for like three or four years now. Like even this 11 Pro that I'm still holding on to, it's still really snappy. The cameras on it are very good and the speed of the 11 Pro is really not that far behind the 14 Pro. So the 15 Pro's new processor, I'm sure it's amazing. I'm sure it does neural this and psychosomatic that or whatever, but will I be upgrading my 14 Pro to the 15 Pro for the faster processor? Hell no, that's not a huge deciding factor. 
So out of all the things that I've mentioned, what would actually get me to upgrade to the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max? Number one would actually be the battery life. My 14 Pro after one year of use is at 93%, so it's at peak performance, easily gets me through a day with kind of moderate normal use. But honestly, some days it drains really fast and that may be like an iOS thing, I don't know. But there's not many days where I'm like, damn, I wish this battery would do better. And I'm not at that point yet after one year where I'm like, I need to spend another thousand dollars to get a better battery on this phone. The 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max are more efficient. They do have that newer chip, so your battery life will be a little bit better. It'll be a fresh new device, but the 14 Pro works totally fine. The titanium body is another thing that might get me to upgrade, but I can deal with fingerprints on the side. It's not a huge deal in the 14 Pro. And again, there haven't really been moments where I was like, I wish this thing was stronger and withstood many drops. I don't even use a case or screen protector on this thing, and it still looks fantastic. And then the cameras. The cameras are definitely upgraded on the 15 Pro. A slightly bigger sensor with that extra five times zoom. That's really cool. Is it going to be something that I'll upgrade for? Probably not. And the photo and video quality on the 14 Pro are still pretty phenomenal overall. I don't really have a lot of complaints other than they look sharp as hell. They're like way too over sharpened, but I'm not taking like stuff that's gonna go in the MoMA or something using this phone. So I don't really feel like the camera is that different, honestly, than the 14 Pro. The action button is really cool on the 15 Pro. Can I live without it? Probably. Would it advance my life? Is it worth $1,000? I don't think so. USB-C is also a really cool addition, but when the hell do I ever even plug in my 14 Pro? I always use MagSafe or wireless charging. So it's another thing that's cool, but kind of meh. The faster processor, this is already fast enough for me. But let me know in the comments what you're gonna do. Are you gonna upgrade to the 15 Pro, 15 Pro Max, or maybe the 15, 15 Plus? Are there any features that you are really looking forward to in the new 15 lineup? I would love to hear from y'all down in the comments. And if you watched all the way to the end of this video, slap an eggplant emoji in the comments down below. And I may just bite like every word I've said in this video because I am part of the iPhone upgrade plans so I might just do it but I guess you're just gonna have to subscribe and find out. <laughs>